Hello again and welcome back to Tacoma. You know, I was looking, there's this webpage you could go to. It's called howlongtobeat.com and you go there and it tells you how long other people have taken to complete a game. In this game, it shows like completionists taking like three and a half hours to complete it. I just, I can't believe that. I mean, we've already spent an hour and all we've really done is learn about Obsolescence Day. I, I guess we've learned more than that. We learned that there was uh, some debris that hit the station, knocked out communications, and um, knocked out their oxygen supply. And I think in the last episode I said that um, they perished, but they, they they didn't perish, at least according to many. I went back and watched the starting of the of. Uh, the last episode when I was editing it and many our little ships AI when we flew in here said that the crew had been evacuated so hopefully that means everybody got off of here safely but we don't know for sure yet so anyway we've learned a little bit and um, we're gonna move on here I think really where we want to go now is into personal quarters because we've looked everywhere else we've heard all of the stories here so it's time for us to move on and you know another thing I want to point out about how I was just saying how it's going to take me longer than three and a half hours to play it. Well, I mean, part of what makes this take longer is that I'm talking to you guys too. You know, I mean, I like right now I'm stopped talking to you all. Whereas if I was playing it by myself, I wouldn't be doing that. I would be moving through the game and playing the game. You know, there'd be no introduction at the starting of each episode. There'd no, there'd be no wrap up at the end of each episode. So that does take some time. I wanted to come back in here real quick just to look at the uh, calendar again. Let's see if there's anything interesting. I mean, I think that this this day, the day we recorded is the 29th, maybe? I'm not sure. Or the recordings were from three days ago. Uh, I think today, as I, my character Amy walks on this station is the 29th, I think. So that, I think that means that everything happened on the 26th, maybe? I don't know. You you would think that there'd be something on here that says obsolescence day, wouldn't you? This just says light asteroid activity alert, normal operations, crew physicals. No idea what that is. Uh, I don't know what that is either. But there's nothing on here that says obsolescence day, and you you'd think that would be something that would be on the calendar, wouldn't you? I would think so. But anyway, let's finally move forward. And, and, you know, I say move forward. I mean, there's a whole big other part of this ship remaining. I just can't imagine. I don't know how people get through this thing in three and a half hours. So we've come through here now on that. Okay, they do come back. I was wondering if when I came back into an area, the recordings would come back. But And now I know. So this is personal space or personal quarters or whatever. Uh, okay, so this is EV St. James's space. But, I mean... Where's the other people's space? Is this just her space? If this is just her space, it's a pretty nice space, right? That's a, I mean, considering this is a space station, there's a. Oh, what's this? Huh. Interesting. I was going to say, this is a lot of space for a space station. Let's recover AR data. There is. 
Oh. Really? Oh, well, that's too bad. She has a very nice voice. I actually enjoyed the little song. You can see it says this one was captured two months ago. So, two months ago. We can grab the guitar if we want to. We could uh, look at it. Uh, I don't think I can play it, though, but let's go ahead and put it back. There's a little guitar pick there. You can look at the guitar pick, and it says Music Emporium, Tacoma, Washington. Uh, we got sticker notes here. No note written on there yet. We got uh, this thing that we could collapse. Which is pretty neat. It makes it look like you've got a nice window to the mountains there. Uh, let's see here. There might be something interesting going on down here. Because when we walked here, the game actually told me to crouch. Oh, there's a pen on the ground. Felt writer. Okay, this pen has no... No uh, information. Grab lid. Okay, we've got papers here. Uh, Karen St. James, death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away to the next room. I am I and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we still are. Why should I be out of mind because I am out of sight? I am but waiting for you. For an interval. Somewhere very near, just around the corner, all is well. Huh. So someone has passed here. Her sister. Oh, gosh. Her sister. Sister of Evelyn Victoria St. James. Hmm. There's a note. Evie, thank you for being home. Your presence made Karen's final months so much more bearable for all of us. Here is a program from the service and something else she wanted you to have, Mom. So apparently, I'm going to guess she had cancer. I mean, they said her final months there. So it wasn't unexpected. Hmm. And then something she wanted her to have, a brooch. Oh, it's that's really cool. It's beautiful. Oh. Anything else in here we want to look at? There's some medicine here. Um, this is some um, Solstia Dormadrine. I'm going to guess this is like for sleeping, maybe? I mean, not, just, just by the name. I guess. I don't know. Oh, there's two of them in there. Same thing box here a box of it um nasal spray okay i mean just the name solstia and dormadrine makes me think it's for sleeping but i don't think i've ever heard of a nasal stray spray for sleeping but maybe there is such a thing i don't know anything else in here we want to look at doesn't look like it let's go ahead and put things back the way we got them Close that up. So she had a sister who passed. Sad, sad, sad. Drink bag. Oh, she's been drinking some wine. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> How do we do it? We'd like to think that the real secret is the award-winning grapes we use to make our acclaimed blended wines. With our beautiful acreage, on the north shore of Massachusetts, the most ideal climate and soil richness both contribute to what Wine International hails as the best region for grape growing of the 2080s. Global warming, anyone? Here's her little lavatory. You have some music, sink, and we got some makeup and toothpaste and one bizarre looking toothbrush and some toiletries. I don't think we need to look through all that. We've got books, uh, Who Fears Death, Mind of My Mind, Antihelion, some short stories, a Jazz Cleopatra, Difficult Conversations, Becoming an Amazing Leader. Here's a photo of a kitty cat. Isn't that adorable? tube of 
Just lip balm. And more books down there. Okay, so we've learned a little bit more about Evie. Nikki Jemison, signed by Nikki, so I guess she was a big fan of Nikki there. Um, what is this? Fresh cat favorite. Okay, so she has a cat. Here's her suit. Tacoma Crew. There's a watering can, so there must must be or must have been a plant in here. Victimless animal free meat. Oh, look at that kitty. That's a cute kitty. Very photogenic. Over here we got a little reading nook. We could close it if we want to. And here's a book. Oh gosh, the bell jar. Okay, maybe not the best thing to be reading during sad times. I actually read this book and I did not like it, but um, I'm not sure I'm the right audience. If that makes any sense. 1228. Don't know what that means, but let's try to remember that number, shall we? 1228. Maybe there'll be some code we need to put in somewhere at some point. I don't know. Curious about this space right here. What's in that space? Well, you really have to curl up to read in that spot, though, right? Okay. Well, that is... Uh, oh, this cat bowl there. Okay. That is... She'd been drinking a lot of wine. This is Evie's place, so we need we learned a little bit about Evie here. All right, let's go to a different part of the ship. Um, I think that lounge is a dead end, isn't it? I don't think there's any place else to go down there. We've been everywhere there is to be in here. Did did I look at the? Uh, did I spend any time in the administration? Yeah, we looked in here, didn't we? We looked in here. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else for us to see in here. Okay. Alright, go back out here. And remember, we're downloading this. It's only at 50%. Alright, the AR data you're encountering is coming through to us as well. It'll leave a recovery signature, but that's okay. Okay. We have this thing here. And I don't think there's anything new for us to look at here. So let's, um, let's see, this is some kind of hub. Hmm. Local AI data process in progress. Please return when process is complete. Okay. Oh, oh, is this the... Yeah, this is the elevator we took to get down here, maybe. What's this? Just got a new message, I believe. Subcontractor Farrier. For security reasons, AR crew record data is deleted automatically. Accidental data retention by the automated system does not confer contractor access privileges to this confidential inter information. Your cooperation is appreciated. Huh. Okay, I don't really know what... Does that mean that those recordings that we just watched slash listen, listened to are going to go away? I don't like that. I liked the thought that I could always come back to him if I wanted to. Oh, interesting. Here's a little note. Lost wedding ring, gold band, engraved with RW plus NK inside. I think I lost it somewhere in engineering. Please let me know if you find it, Bert. Okay. So, Bert... I guess that's Roberta Williams, I guess, right? RW. Yeah, that's what that is. RW and NK. I mean, are these two together? Or is that just a coincidence that the uh, initials are the same? Roberta Williams. Some tape. 
in a triangle because it's futuristic. Uh, Sarah, a pamphlet. We are Orbital Workers, 2087 Union Member Pamphlet. What your dues make possible today, a victory for the workers, the end of the Orbital Workers Safety Bill, the full report on the historic vote that struck down this anti-union bill. Okay. I wonder if that's an actual um, QR code. I bet it is. Somebody scanned that. <laughs> Let me know. Here's Clive's little cubby. Uh, here's Evie's cubby. Piece of paper here. Obsolescence Day party tomorrow. Friendly reminder. Our yearly Obsolescence Day party is tomorrow. Refreshments will be provided. The pleasure of your company is requested tomorrow at 7 p.m. in the dining hall. In the administration module. Warmly, Clive. Uh, Natalie. She's got a bunch of stuff stacked in here. And Andrew. Is that the whole crew? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess that's the whole crew, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, no, more personal quarters right there. Got a sheet of paper thrown away. Uh, your avenue to the star is the Venturous Belt. Imagine a little piece of heaven all to yourself. The next giant leap in Venturus's plan to open up the orbital life to all, the Venturus Belt, will be a network of over 1,000 private orbital bungalows arrayed around the Earth. The Venturus Belt is for anyone looking to experience life in orbit without the astronomical price tag. Each orbital bungalow in the Venturus Belt can accommodate up to six guests plus pets. The first Venturus Belt orbital bungalows are already deployed in orbit and are expected to begin operation in late 2088. Group rates and loyalty discounts from many corporate partners are accepted and encouraged. There's a place in the Venturus Belt for everyone. Interesting. Let's go to these quarters. These are Clive's quarters. Oh, there's, ooh, recoverable right here. Okay, data recovered. Jim, are you there? Ah, uh, hello. Yeah, we haven't heard who's staying on yet, and you know, it can be a tense time, as you know. But how are things at Carnival? I trust you got back to Terra Firma safely? No, you're already headed back out towards Jupiter. Why, well, I, I thought that... Oh yes, come on in, love. So are you rounding Sol, then? That's tremendous. Eight months. <clears throat> uh, Germ, I, I must leave now. Yeah, ring me again before the resplendence leaves Earth space, won't you? Ta ta. Sorry about that. An old friend from my carnival days. Consorting with the enemy? <laughs> Worry not, Mon Capitan. I am nothing if not discreet. Are you gonna miss me, Clive? If VT kicks one of us off of this pinwheel. Miss you? How could I? The next thing VT would receive after ending your contract would be my letter of resignation. Oh, so you think I'm the one who's getting shit canned? I mean, considering how indispensable I am, naturally. Evie, can you get back to cargo? On my way. <clears throat> May I? Yeah, come on. <laughs> so do you suppose there's good news? That'd be nice for a change. What is it? We talked about how I needed access to Odin's direct interface. Uh-huh. Uh, so how about this? Tell VT if they don't grant access to Odin, they're gonna have to find themselves a new network specialist. Oh but my god. Nat, you're not even renewed yet. You don't have access to Odin? No. There's a whole part of the networking module I can't even get into. People, people, everything on this station is VT's property. We're subcontractors. They get to decide what exactly we do and don't have access to. It's in all our paperwork. So if you want to quit, then just quit, but don't make me your go-between. I mean, it is fair. How is she meant to do her job? Clive. Then again, rules are rules. Nat, I'll think about it. For now, how about you just get the rest of this job done while you still have it? Aye, aye, Captain. Hmm. So, if you remember, when we were in Evie's office in the last episode, um, there was a note about her third request for access to Odin and it was denied. I think it was her note. 
It was in her office, pretty sure. Okay, so there was a lot going on there. Um, and we followed it mostly from Clive's perspective. So when we first saw Clive, he was talking to somebody. Jim. And we could look at this desktop here. So he's talking to Germ. Off-station AR call with Jermaine Burgess, Carnival Cruise. Mm -hmm. And, um... Failed. From Orbital Worker Union Local 1293, a message from the Orbital Hospitality and Logistics Union. Remember your rights. February 29th, 2080 was scheduled to be the final day that commercial and industrial orbital facilities would be operated by human crew members. Something about historic human oversight accord. Putting a halt to the obsolescence of these brave workers in the face of advancing automation. It is your legal right to celebrate this momentous event on the last day of February each year, no matter what your employer claims. Report any attempts at worker suppression to your OHLU local representative on behalf of all your fellow union workers. Happy Obsolescence Day. Um, so they were going to get rid of human crew members on this date, and I guess run it all by AI, but instead they overturned that and put a halt to the obsolescence of the, so this was supposed to be obsolescence day when humans were going to be obsolete so that's where obsolescence day came from but that didn't happen whoops and then here banter a guide for the inspired social climber there's no need for the workplace to be humorless as a morgue undertakers aside make levity part of your workday shared references can something Find out what movies and TV programs are tickling funny bones around the office. And that's how fast friends are made. To keep things casual and endear yourself to the higher-ups, refer to them by am amusing and informal phrases instead of boss. Memorable, memorable bon mots like fearless leader, skipper, or head honcho. Okay. There's always that one fellow, you know the type, who seems to forget his lunch more days than not and ends up buying the meatloaf from the company cafeteria. Well, okay. So I'm curious, if we played, can we hear his side of the conversation? Are you there? Uh, hello. No, we cannot. Okay, and so... Back to terra firma safely? No, you're already headed back out towards Jupiter. Why? Okay, so now there's something happened with the green person here at the start of this. So who who and where is green? Not here. Huh? Interesting. Where's green? Oh, green's way over here in the fitness center. All right, green person, you're up, Andrew Dagyab, doing some yoga, maybe, or some kind of, maybe he's lifting some weights. Oh, okay, recoverable data here. Uh, he's on a call with Nicholas, I guess his son, perhaps. off-station message with Mark Figueroa. Hey Mark, this is the article I was talking about last time we were discussing finances. Give it a look. Sorry to be a downer. Love you. Myth. Real currency is more stable than consumer loyalty. Reality. This may have been true in the earliest years of OCEP's official recognition of the loyalty economy, but... Think of it like diversifying your financial portfolio, except... Myth. Converted loyalty is just as valuable as original loyalty. Reality. While there are many companies out there, some more reputable than others, that will offer to convert your loyalty between parent companies, think of loyalty as working on the same component... Oh, I'm sorry. 
working on the same compound interest system as a retirement plan or 401k account, ask your grandparents. When you draw your loyalty from your original parent company and transfer it, you lose all those years or decades. It's never worth it. Okay. Failed. Failed. Okay, so we're going to hear a conversation between him and his son, it sounds like. Nicholas, I know that you... Yeah, I know. Both you and your father would like me home sooner, but... Listen. You have your heart set on Amazon, don't you? Okay. And there's no way we're gonna have enough customer loyalty between your dad and I for a full ride by the time you start school. Not at this rate. So, we're just gonna have to pay some of that tuition out of pocket. Yeah, just one more year. And I'm pretty sure I'll get it. I'm hoping. What? No, it's not dangerous. What do you mean dangerous? Radiation shielding is pretty much 100% on a station like this, so there's no... Well... Yeah. Well, it might have been manufactured 30 years ago, but they've upgraded. Man, no, we're... Your stories aren't usually such... We're not all gonna get cancer or bone yeah, disease or... Okay? I suppose I am uh, Listen, would it make you feel better to hear it straight from the station doctor? Wait. Okay, you hold on. me? <clears throat> or... Hey, Sarah, can I, uh, can I bother you for a second? What? Oh, um, sorry. What is it? I have my son, Nicholas, on AR, and he wanted to ask you... What? No, you said you wanted... Well, I didn't... Okay, I'm sorry, hold on. Now, Nicholas... Nicholas? Hello? Teens, huh? <laughs> yeah. Almost done with high school. Almost. Um, it just, incidentally, is there anything we should be worried about with another year out here, health-wise? Radiation, bone density? Oh no. We spend almost all of our time in Earth gravity, and radiation shielding on a station like this is basically 100%. See, that's what I told him. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Nothing to worry about. Okay, Odin, where were we? Okay, so that's Andrew's story from the start. Now we're going to look at orange because orange is the third marker on this uh, timeline thing here at the bottom of the screen. By the way, this was captured four days ago. So this was before Obsolescence Day. Doing all this stuff backwards, it looks like. All right, let's uh, hear things from Roberta Williams's perspective. All right, ladies, you have everything you need? Yep, oh. Thanks for offering to help. Oh yeah, no problem. I mean, you know how much I love completely mindless and busy work. Okay, we'll pause here for just a moment. Yearly hand count inventory checklist, page two. Some air filtration valve cover, air filtration valve covers, compressor, general fuel tank, blah, blah, blah. Failed. A uh, message with Clive. Something about yearly inventory, quality, ass quality assurance, and count day. Already on it. Trying to get it all done before the OBSO day party tomorrow so I can party with a clear conscience. Understandable. Tomorrow's celebration will require your, your full attention. Oh man, do you think Evie would mind if... If what? And then no problem, two heads are better than one. Okay... And we connect you with licensed therapists on demand. We're here to listen when you need it most. Personalized therapy with licensed practitioners. Uh, I guess this is Roberta talking to her therapist, Penny. Maybe, and I'm trying to focus on the bright side with Nat. At least it pays well. The isolation pay. Feel like I'm holding her back. She's up here on this shit posting because it's all I qualified for. And she could be somewhere so much better. Okay, I have to go do this yearly task thing now. Thanks for your time. Penny says, thank you for using Ori. Bye, Roberta. Session ended. Your Ori licensed therapist today was Penny. Was your experience with Penny five star? 
Okay, so Roberta and Nat are a couple, and Nat could be someplace much better, but Nat has decided to be here in this crappy place with Roberta, and Roberta feels bad about that. So I guess that's everything. Right? Yeah, okay. All right, let's resume. Kid, don't start. We don't even know if we're getting renewed yet. We're getting renewed. Okay, so if you're so sure, maybe we should just do our jobs then? So we'll get renewed again next year? Oh, next year? Nah, I'm gonna quit. Stop. What? They don't even give me access to the system I'm supposed to be maintaining. I mean, are you kidding me? Huh? Well, do you really need direct access to Odin? It's the principle of the thing. I mean, what if they were like, hey, Bert, your job's a mechanical engineer, but, you know, don't touch anything under the hood? Well, I'd still be pulling a paycheck, for one thing. Come on, you're a good engineer. You're totally gonna waste up here. Well, didn't you say Evie was gonna talk to corporate about giving you more access? Yeah, but it never went anywhere. Hey. No, that's a good point, actually. What? Evie, can you get back to cargo? On your way. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, this will work. Matt. What is it? Hey, remember when we talked about how I needed access to Odin's direct interface? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, so how about this? Tell VT if they don't grant access to Odin, they're gonna have to find themselves a new network specialist. Oh but, my god. <laughs> Nat, you're not even renewed yet. You don't have access to Odin? No. There's a whole part of the networking module I can't even get into. People, people, everything on this station is VT's property. We're subcontractors. They get to decide what exactly we do and don't have access to. It's in all our paperwork. So if you want to quit, then just quit, but don't make me your go-between. I mean, it is fair. How is she meant to do her job? Clive. Then again, rules are rules. Nat, I'll think about it. But for now, how about you just get the rest of this job done while you still have it? Aye, aye, Captain. Well, that did not go well for Nat. She's thinking that if she plays the, oh, I'll quit card, then she'll get access to Odin, but apparently not. Airlock sealed. Wow, look, next auto drone delivery is scheduled in 99 days. Okay, so that is what happened from this perspective. Now we have one more to look at, and that's from the perspective of Sarah the Medic. So we're going to cruise on over here and see if we can't find her. And look at things from her perspective. She's coming from the locker room. And she's talking to Odin, it looks like. Okay, they've all got lockers in here. We'll look at those in a bit. Let's go ahead and uh, see what's going on here. Why is Evie's locker open? All right, let's see what's up with Sarah Hasmati, the medic. Through this, I learned that people do not always want what they believe they want. Yeah. I believe I have learned a great deal. Really? Like what? Very early in my source's cognitive record, I recall an intense period of personal growth. I was tasked with internalizing the behavioral idiosyncrasies of an individual to which my operator was emotionally attached. Huh. I expanded my capabilities to faithfully recreate her procedural reasoning, vocal attributes, and other qualities. After months of effort, I gave my operator precisely what was asked of me. A perfect emulation of the target personality, accurate in every detail. Wow. To my befuddlement, he did not react in a positive way. Our relationship began to deteriorate irreparably. We never again spoke personally in the manner I had become accustomed to. Man, no, your stories aren't usually such We're not all gonna get cancer or bone Is disease everything or... okay? I suppose I am preoccupied Listen, with your potential departure. Station, Wait, okay, you mean on. me? <clears throat> or... Hey Sarah, can I uh, bother you for a second? What? Oh, um, sorry. What is it? I have my son, Nicholas, on AR, and he wanted to ask you... What? No, you said you wanted... Well, I didn't... Okay, I'm sorry, hold on. Now, Nicholas... Okay, so she's brought up her AR desktop. 
Richard Sturgeon's Zero Spiel, an Agent Robertson novel by Edmund Tran. Zero Spiel. Are you sure? Says her tiny. Never sure. Around the whirling vortex spins the tiny ball, the fulcrum on which the entire mission rests. Rien ne va plus. No more bets, no more chances, just this one. Her tiny's probability calculations fluctuate in Robertson's AR. Turn that off, she says under her breath. Don't need it. 13. The dolly drops on 13. Players' chips are raked by the table's magnets. Robertson pushes away from the roulette table, and her mag boots disengage. The countersign has been confirmed. She is floating through the orbital casino at a measured pace. The gilded scales of women's dresses float away from their bodies in microgravity, shining like precious metal Christmas trees. Earth glows blue through the casino's picture windows. Her tiny speaks in AR. I assume that means that you and the platform AI have an agreement in place? Robertson. Robertson, we're one step closer to the biggest score low Earth orbit has ever seen. Ooh, gripping. Uh, let's see here. Message with Nat. Here's his contact info if you want it. Bye. Uh, M. Hassan, Tangier Orbital Freeport, Low Earth Orbit. Okay, so Natalie gave Sarah M. Hassan's information. Don't know who that is. Message with Odin. Odin, what's my damn gym locker code? It's 0315. Of course, right. Sorry for bugging you about it. I don't mind. Uh, and then another message with Nat. Well, it's lots of people. Hackers, hippies, AI, rights folks. Yeah, I mean, Tangiers is cool. Okay, well, I've got a friend there, and you'd like him. He, and he has a zero-G bonsai garden. That sounds pretty cool. What's his name? Cluey Dog. I mean, okay, his real name is Hassan, but maybe if your contract doesn't get renewed, visit on the way home? I'll think about it. Okay, so that's who M. Hassan, a.k.a. Cluey Dog, who I thought we mentioned, I saw mention of before, um, is Nat's friend, who she's saying that Sarah should meet if she goes through Tangiers. Okay, and let's see if anything else happens here with Sarah. Nicholas? Hello? Teens, huh? <laughs> yeah. Almost done with high school. Almost. Um, it just incidentally, is there anything we should be worried about? With another year out here, health-wise, radiation, bone density... Oh no. We spend almost all of our time in Earth gravity, and radiation shielding on a station like this is basically 100%. See, that's what I told him. Okay, thanks, Sarah. Nothing to worry about. Okay, Odin, where were we? Okay, that is the end of that recording. We've heard all of it from every perspective, and now we get to walk around and do some exploring. So, um, let's just uh, look around in here. Station components. Okay, just, you know, some station components. In here we've got some containers, some confetti in a box, standard party supplies, <laughs> alphanumeric wall character set, 64 count, spiral streamers, 18 count, confetti packets, I think 8 count. <laughs> okay, I pick up the tray because you never know there could be something underneath of it. Tape, nothing special about the tape. Okay, just some party supplies. Here we've got um, medium grain rice just sitting there in the corner. And um, anything else of interest in here? Doesn't really look like it, does it? Don't think I'm going to find anything interesting in here. Let's go back out here to this room. More rice sitting here. Here's laundry. 
And there's those scuff marks again. We've been seeing these scuff marks on the floor. And you know, I actually noticed these, I told you, I, wa I went back and watched the starting of the last episode, and I saw these scuff marks all the way back to where we entered the ship. And there was a big, like, wooden box there that said it contained AI or something. So here's the laundry. Here we've got a magazine. Ventura. Oh, there's Sergio Venturi right there. We saw him fit his face on the dartboard. Fitting out orbital station Salem. Challenges and solutions. Low, low dishes on her Lux trip to Zenith. What makes Sergio tick? Eat your vegetables. How the crew of Supply Depot Armstrong supplements their diet. Ooh, orbital certification in six months. Another QR code up there. At Ventura's Technical University, anyone can achieve orbital worker certification status in just six months. Most training is done via AR from the comfort of your own hab. Tuition fees can be paid against future earnings. No upfront costs to you. You love working in space. Refer a friend or family member and receive double loyalty with Venturis for one year. Certified, certified in there. That That is a bizarre looking QR code down there in the lower left. I don't know if that's a real one or not. Oh, we've got some soap. Hand soap, it says. Okay, it translated that one for us. Not sure why it's never translated anything else. And we got some laundry detergent, and we got some laundry machines, and are we going to find anything interesting in here? Here's a coin. Check that out. 2087 coin. Singapore. Neat. That's kind of cool. Unfortunately, I can't keep it. It's not, like, it's not like I can put it in my inventory. I have no inventory. Ooh, there's, there's the cat. House cat. Crew member companion animal. The cat stayed there the entire time. <laughs> I just wanted to see if the cat moved around at all, but no, the cat stayed there the whole time. Okay, cat likes it here in the laundry room. Maybe the sounds of the machines, maybe the heat from the dryers. I don't know, I don't have a cat. I don't know what cat's like. Okay, so we're gonna go down here. We're gonna see if uh, Clive has anything interesting in his office. Emerging Artist Annual Showcase. Venturis Zenith Lunar Resort Exterior. Pretty cool looking. And we've got a cool view on the outside. You can even see Earth rotating over there. That's cool. Close the blinds if we wanted to. That way, not every, everybody on Earth doesn't see you taking off your clothes. Little statuette here. Earth, Tacoma, Moon. Sculptor, Anna Banerjee Fernandez. Original composition, Ventures Corp 2072. Okay. Another statuette. Ascent of Humanity, same sculptor. Here we've got... Venturis Zenith Lunar Resort Main Lobby. A Hilton U flag. A drink bag of oolong tea. Bottle of vitamins. Ah, a workstation here. The Venturis Belt. Current employees and contractors invest now. Double loyalty when customers rent out your orbital bungalow. So nothing on their screen. Oh, I meant, here we go. From Ventura's Operational Logistics, Contractor Siddiqui, we have received your inquiries about your application for position Ventura's Belt Timeshare Sales Coordinator. As noted in our prior message, your materials are under review and will be considered along with all other applicants for this position. We will contact you with any further updates as necessary. Okay. Here we've got notes to self. Call mother. Evie's birthday coming up. Gym locker 1407. Okay, well, we know his uh, Clive's gym locker number, which I don't know if the game is going to be nice enough to remember that for me or not. So you hear me shuffling some pieces of paper around here. 
So I'm going to write Clive Locker 1407. Um, and then, yeah, send a request EV special cat food. Oh, send request EV special for cat food. Don't slack off in gym and search AR tutorial cake decoration. All right. And then here is Clive's ID. Citizenship, USSR EU. Interesting. Issued in London. All right. Okay. There's that. And it looks like we've got more little statuettes in here. Tacoma extracted. Somebody likes statuettes. And vessel in flight. Okay. All right. There is Clive's. So you'll see much. Well, this is this is an office. This is not his personal quarters, right? There's no bed in here, so this is just his office. And I guess his personal quarters are over here. Well, if I go through there. That'll start a new recording. I don't want to start a new recording. I want to explore this whole area of this recording before going to a new area. So we're in the locker room here. Um, Evie has left her locker open. Fitness program, cardio boost. Caloric intake, mild deficit, last activity 42 days ago. Got uh, some shampoo, can of curling gel, towel, shoes. Don't know why I need to grab the shoe, but there it is. Okay. Now we we don't know Sarah's code, so we can't get in there. But we do know Clive's code. see if there's anything interesting in here at all. Come on, let's open the door the rest of the way, dude. There we go. Uh, here is a picture of Clive. Okay. Uh, college Peak Statistics. Come on, Clive. So he's trying to get back to his College Peak Statistics. Good luck, buddy. Good luck check his chasing the past there. Fitness program, Intermediate 1, Caloric Intake Custom Plan, last activity nine days ago. And he's got a drink bag, some water, he's got some coconut lemon gum. Interesting. I'd try that. <laughs> Here's a key. Bunk drawer. Bunk drawer? Um, huh. Can I? I don't have an inventory, do I? I mean, if I found, I mean, where's... Where's Clive's personal quarters? I can't... Unfortunately, I don't think I could carry that thing around. I, I guess I don't have a pocket. Um... Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Uh... Roberta. No. Okay. Huh. Well, I guess we'll just remember that that key is there. And, um... Oh, well. We'll just remember that that key is there. And if we ever find Clive's personal space, maybe we'll come back and get that key and see if we can't use it to get into his bunk. Is that what it says? Bunk? Bunk drawer. Huh. I'm not sure how to do this. So there's two ways in here. Okay, that'll that'll start a new recording, I believe. The soothing sounds of Venturis Radio. Okay. Huh. So there's another way in here. Interesting. Um it says personal quarters and office. I mean, where's... Oh, okay. That is Clive's personal quarters. Okay, 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 okay. 
All right, so I think we've explored everywhere there is in this... I was going to call it a recording bubble. Right? So let's go back into the locker room. We're going to grab that key. And we're going to go into Clive's place. Titania Public House. Okay. No, Germ, look, I just... I don't know... I don't know why. Uh, all right? I mean, you, you know how I've always been. It's never real in my mind. <laughs> why would she give a damn about me? Of all the people... Oh, shit. Oh, bollocks. No, I'm just... <laughs> I'm spilling scotch all over out of space. <laughs> Is there any more? It still shows us playing down there. Okay, still playing. Maybe it's just corrupted. This is eight months ago. Okay. We've got some AR data here that we could look at. His message with Jermaine. Off station message with Jermaine. It's true. Here's why I'll be out of touch for the next eight months or so. Carnival Cruise Lines launches Far Reach's expedition tour past Jupiter. An historic first for orbital vacation travel, Carnival Cruise Line's Resplendence long-term habitation vessel will host 1,333 of Earth's wealthiest and most adventurous travelers for the voyage of a lifetime. Helmed by Chief Cruise Officer Germaine Burgess, the Resplendence, blah, 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 swing tightly past Jupiter, giving lucky passengers an extended view of this spectacular gas giant, its many moons, and its famous great red spot, before continuing on course back toward Earth. The full duration of the excursion is nearly eight full calendar months, during which time blah blah blah. So, old Germain here is the chief cruise officer. Sounds important. Failed. Message with EV. Sounds nice, but wouldn't that be a lot of work? Not in the least, my dear. All good Britons are trained in presenting proper high tea. And in bullshitting? They have AR tutorials for everything these days. Okay, so apparently he was talking about making some tea or something. So old Clive sitting here drinking some scotch, talking to Jermaine. And it did say eight months ago, and this trip he was going on was lasting eight months. So I guess maybe his other... Um, Interactions with Clive or after that happens. After the trip. So we have this key for bunk drawer. What is this thing? Huh. From Bernadette Siddiqui to Clive Siddiqui. Tea set silver. <laughs> okay, so he had a tea set ship shipped up here. All right. <laughs> okay. So that's what was in there. Where's this this bunk with the this locker? I mean, right here. Insert key. Let's look. Here's a letter. Uh, it's to Clive from Bernadette. Dear mother. What? Oh, okay. Bernadette is his mother. I write to congratulate you on your recent appointment to the advisory council of the Tate 20th century. Your prestigious career in the arts has been a constant inspiration to me. 
To that end, I have continued exploring advancement both within Venturus and without. When I left Hilton after graduating Hilton U, I was so excited for the possibilities at Carnival, but as you told me then, foregoing company loyalty for fickle opportunity is a tough path. Or fraught path, maybe. I have been working to claw my way back up ever since. Trust, at least, that I am trying my best every day. I promise to tell you more about Evelyn Victoria, aka EV. She is the administrator of this station, and her wit and candor keep me constantly on my toes. And for what it's worth, I am deeply in love. I dare say she might well meet your approval. Perhaps on our next shore leave, a visit to the family estate is in order with all my love, Clive. Huh, I wonder if that um, feeling is mutual between Evie and Clive. Here we've got a little pen with some writing on it that I cannot decipher. And here is a packet of softlets. Tissues, okay. Um, set that on the ground right there. Bracelets. Okay. A couple of bracelets. And a card. Darling, I found these on shore leave in a quaint Brighton market stall. They brought to mind the color of your chestnut aisles. eyes, stupid Clive. Oh. Okay, did he try to give these to EV and didn't? And she didn't like it? Or did he just chicken out or what? I don't know. Oh, whoops. Put the card back. Put the lid back on. And you find all kinds of inf interesting stuff in people's personal spaces. I guess I could just leave that key right there. Uh, we have some coins, which are cool to look at. Another Singapore coin. 120 years of independence. Oh, just threw it on the ground. Whatever, dude. Uh, Carnival Cruise, dear Clive. As per our communication, we must reiterate that our decision regarding your application for readmission into the Carnival employee ecosystem is final. Despite having received a letter of endorsement from current employee Burgess Germain A., we cannot alter our position on this matter. Unfortunately, employees who fail to fulfill contracted duration with Carnival are not eligible for rehire now or in the future, regardless of circumstances. Hmm. So yeah, he used to work for Carnival. And there's a piece of paper from Hilton. Uh, September 24, 27. Dear Mr. Siddiqui, thank you for your interest in rejoining the Hilton family. Unfortunately, at this time, we are seeking a candidate with deeper experience working with the public at a high level of service. We welcome you to reapply once you have achieved at least two full-length postings at a position of a management, management cuss serve on a Class 3 leisure facility or greater. We regret to state that attending Hilton University is not a guarantee of employment, since you left the Hilton family following graduation. We wish you all the best in your career pursuits. Sincerest regards. Some name, Burn, Assistant Hiring Manager, Hilton Orbital Command. This letter has been dispatched to you on paper due to work at worker union requirements with which Hilton is in full compliance, okay? I was just wondering if I could pick up these crumbled papers. Doesn't look like it. So we got a fork, we've got a food tub, vitro beef chili mild. Okay. And we got a can of into Ananas Blancaro. Okay, whatever. Uh photograph of Trafalgar Square. Oh, here's some more. Crew member personal station Clive's just jazzing around mix. <laughs> I don't know why that amused me. Oh, he's got a cool view of the moon. That's pretty cool. We got some ties over here. We've got Tom Stoppard, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern are dead. Here's his little 
soap can of hair pomade moisturizing lotion some wipes you can draw your own conclusions there okay football so he used to play football for Hilton U looks like and that is a little bit about Clive well I'm going to hang out here in Clive's room at the end of this episode here this is where this episode ends we come back next time we'll go back out in the hallway out there and um, we'll see what else there is to see listen to what else there is to listen to and um, hmm. more softlets another coin well before we end this let's read this so I don't forget next time uh, Hilton Loan Servicing, Hilton University Student Loan Repayment Division. Program status, non-employee full personal repayment plan. Total principal and interest due this statement, 13,769.15 EURB. Remaining principal, principal and interest, 658,000. Wow. Thank you for your prompt payment. Yikes. Whew. Okay. Well, he owes a ton of money to Hilton U. Okay. That will do it for this episode. Thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you let me know, leave me a like or a comment. I also want to remind you that I'm recording these way in advance. Uh, let's see, as I record this right now, it's December 11th. And I don't think this will be actually posted on my channel until maybe, I think, December 23rd, I think, is when it'll be posted. I'm recording uh, this in advance so that I have something to post when I am out of town for the holiday. So uh, feel free to leave comments, of course. I will read them when I get back. But uh, if you'd like say, hey, you missed something, well, it's, it's going to stay missed <laughs> because uh, I will have finished the game by the time you see this. Just wanted to let you know so you are aware. Thanks for joining me. Hope you join me again in the next episode.